is Russ. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. We're back out on the road again. <laughs> Actually, I haven't left the road. It is still the same day I did for the other video the other day. I just had to go home and check on the kid as he's working on our fence and also change the position of the water sprinklers. So our home does not have in-ground sprinklers. So I've got to change the watering. Now, typically we try to water early in the morning, but I got up a little late today and didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to turn it on as early as I usually do. It's okay, what time is it now? It's like 9.16, so I went there to shut it off. Now, somebody had asked me, do you ever ride just to enjoy the ride, you know, as far as uh, going slow and looking around and enjoying the neighborhoods. Um, I do look around and enjoy the neighborhoods. The going slow part might be another story. <laughs> I don't, uh, as you know, I don't often go that slow. So, um, yeah, sometimes I, I don't go too slow. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I will, uh, I will typically go, I don't know, let me, let me go where I, how fast I normally go. Let's look at the speedometer here. Yeah, I, I would say I typically go about 18 miles an hour on these things. Now, that's about three miles over the speed limit, I guess. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting thing. You know, these, uh, these areas here where the high tension wires are, it's kind of like open area for the general thing. But the, like the, these guys here, they put a, put a couple fuel goals up here. <laughs> kind of cool. I don't know if they own that part of. I don't think they own. Maybe they, maybe they do own that part of the land. I don't. I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> but in general, the uh, the areas by the high tension wires are um, are really not owned by anybody. They're they're just kind of open area, and they mow the lawns and everything like that. They don't do it. You know the. I guess the public works guys or whoever owns this ground <laughs> will cut it. So yeah, we're not gonna go too far again because uh, the kid is still working on the fence. So I gotta be around the area in case he needs me for anything. All right, we're gonna pass over here. On your left. So, uh, yeah, let's just go down the path as we always do. These are just the local areas that are not too far to go to. Um, people have mentioned we've had, you know, a lot of luck having good uh, bike paths around us. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, we, we are pretty lucky. Oh, let me say something too about stopping. See, we can't do a video without talking about stopping. <laughs> I am finding that I'm stopping more now, and with the new hydraulic brakes, I'm stopping a lot better. I think one of the reasons, too, I wasn't doing 100% full stops as much as I do now. It's not, still it's not full stops, but in terms of the actual amount of stop compared to the amount of stop before, it's more now because, um, the hydraulic brakes literally will stop me right on, on the money. I mean, it's just like you hit it and you're, you're stopped. So um, I think that, that also makes it easier for me to try to do more fuller stops. Uh, I will tell you it will never be a full stop because full stop would really mean, you know, zero miles, miles per hour, hop off the bike, hop back on the bike, start your momentum up again. I'm, I'm never going to do that. I just, I just can't do it. So, um, but I will stop enough so that it's more of a stop on the rolling stop than when it was a mechanical disc brake stop. 
Does that make sense? <laughs> Let me mention something too about passing people on these paths. When you see me passing people on the paths, and uh, you say that you know you're you're not giving them enough space, there's a lot of space. Believe me, there's a lot of space between them and me. Quite often, it's usually maybe at least five feet, maybe when I pass them. At least four, <laughs> if not five. I mean, even a car only gives you three feet to pass. That's the legal law for that. Um, but it's the camera angle that everyone gets confused on. They look at the thing and they'll say, you're too close to that person. I'm not. These people could literally be 10 feet in front of me and it'll look like they're right in front of me based on the camera angle. Okay, yeah, I mean, based on the angle that the camera's shooting, it may look like they're right next to me, but they're not. All right, so just know that I do give people space. I am trying to be safe. I do slow down when necessary. I don't slow down when I don't think it's necessary. What you think is necessary and what I think is necessary could be two totally different things, okay? You are not always right, I'm not always right either, but I'm just saying that uh, Russ is always right. <laughs> That's the name of the channel, come on. No, I'm just kidding. All I'm just saying is that, uh, you know, you, somebody told me that this is what they, they say. You do what you do, I'll do what I do. Yeah, it's true. I won't complain about you if you don't complain about me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just know that the, uh, the angles of the camera does throw things off a little bit. You know, it's not that unusual, too, um, about this topic. And I'll tell you why. Now, many of you might know that I have a background in forensic work. Yeah, I was a former evidence technician. What is that? That's law enforcement, okay? That's law enforcement. And uh, what I do is I collect crime scene evidence. I took photos of crime scene uh, things, you know, homicides, robberies, burglaries, all that type of stuff, right? I collected evidence, I processed scenes for fingerprints, I've testified in court. And many times when you take photos uh, in court, they will try to, to nail you on, on the photograph. I mean, the defense attorney does not want that evidence entered into evidence. And uh, their job is to throw that evidence out. So they're going to, they're gonna, gonna ask you questions. They're gonna say, how far was the gun from the body? How far did you find that knife away from the body? Does this photograph accurately depict that? Uh, how do you know that it is, uh, how do you know that that's actually accurate? Um, you know, so the way we take photos is critical on a crime scene photograph. We'll put a, a scale in there, we'll put a, like a ruler, and, uh, and then we'll shoot it perpendicular because any type of angle that we do is going to look different on the photograph than the reality. If we shoot straight up and down on it, then you can see exactly how far something is to something else. And as long as you have something with scale in there, like a ruler or something, then uh, it's, it's something they can't really refute, right? But think about that same scenario. Yeah, I saw that stop sign. <laughs> uh, think, think about that same scenario when you're riding a bike and you're looking at things as I'm passing people, okay? Like for instance, this, this lady here. Now, does it look like I'm right on top of her? Yeah, we're about uh, 10 feet away. But the angle of the camera might make it look like, yeah, she's right next to me. You know, she's not that far from me. So, yeah, camera angles can throw you off. You may think one thing, but in reality, there's a lot of space, okay? I also do slow down or at least let off on acceleration when I come up to certain people. Like over there, uh, the lady with the dogs, I, I did let up on the throttle. I'm ready to stop if I need to stop. 
and uh, you might not notice that because the, the, the camera will just kind of look like I'm not doing anything. Thank you. So yeah, I, I'm hitting the brakes. I'm doing uh, what I need to do. I will tell you, it's a little harder getting used to this bell being here now. Um, you might know I, I lost my bell that was on the, the brake lever over here because I changed out the brakes. The hydraulic brakes does not have a bell. So if you, if you buy the hydraulic brake option from Tektro, you're not gonna get that Tektro uh, bell anymore. It's not there anymore. Yeah, they're doing something here. It's like a football, uh, football thing going on. Maybe some training or something. Summer training <laughs> for football. Uh, yeah, this is the area that we're gonna go up over the hill. So uh, after we get past this bridge. So let's take it at uh, Pedostas level five. Let's go up the hill. All right, now let's slow down a little bit here. Cannot go up the hill fast. Too many people. <laughs> All right, I'm on five, but I'm also throttling to get myself a little bit of help there to give it full maximum. My, my, my level five, we're going slow because I, I didn't get the momentum going up. Um, my full level five is not set at 100%. I think it's set at like 80 or maybe 85, something like that. Um, so that's why you'll see me sometimes throttle as well as pedal assist and pedal. Because when I throttle and I hit that thing all the way down, I'm getting full power. I don't prefer to have full power at level five. I actually like to be a little bit beyond, behind that because my full power could bring me to uh, 28 miles an hour if I did pedal assist and just kept going because this bike is capable of doing a class three ride. So um, that's why I do what I do, okay? So our odometer now shows 258 miles on the Magicycle. I think I would have had more mileage on this bike had I had the second battery. I don't know what's taking it so long. I don't know whether Magicycle is sending me the 15 amp hour battery or whether they're sending me the 20 amp hour battery. I have no idea what's coming, but it hasn't arrived yet. I've got everything else around it. I've got the battery bag, which is a fireproof battery bag. I've got uh, the, the charger has come in. <laughs> but no battery yet. So uh, last I heard from them, they said that uh, they, they are dealing with customs for the battery and things, uh, which I tend to believe because it is lithium ion. I don't know if they're just waiting for their turn to be inspected or what. I, I have no idea what takes them so long. I did read something that was kind of negative. Uh, one of the uh, viewers mentioned that he had ordered uh, a Magicycle bike and it came in on the day that I released my review. So obviously uh, my review was not the thing that sparked him to buy a Magicycle. He had already ordered it before I even had the review, all right? So, but he said that uh, I guess it got damaged and I guess he contacted Magicycle and he hasn't heard back. I don't know if he's heard back from them or, but he hasn't gotten resolved, let's, let's put it like that. So um, I, I feel bad. I mean, want to hear that? Because I, I know when I, I contact Magicycle, I get pretty much immediate responses. But that's because I'm, you know, I'm talking to the, I don't, I don't even know what his position is at Magicycle, to tell you the truth. I don't think he's ever told me what his actual position is. But uh, I, I have a person that is um, my contact person at Magicycle. And, um, so I get responses really quickly, but I just wanted to let him know that, you know, even I have to wait for certain things. And 
Um, yeah, I understand the frustration because I've been waiting for this battery for a long, long time. And we haven't seen it, of course. But, um, but at least I know, at least in my situation, it's, it's a customs thing that they're... I don't know if that thing's going to help. Well, I guess it does because it is going. Um, at least for me, it's a customs thing that's holding us up. For his, I think he had some damaged parts. So he, it sounds like he's, he's waiting for parts to show up to fix his bike so he can ride it. So, um, yeah, I, I feel sorry for him. I, I, I really don't know what else to do. Um, sorry about that, I got things blowing into me again. <laughs> um, Anyways, some things are beyond Magicycle's uh, control, as it is with some other manufacturers too. Some things actually get stuck in the shipment. So, I think eventually he'll, he'll get resolved, but it's, it's just kind of a pity that he, didn't, uh, he hasn't been able to ride his bike because of it. I, you know, these stories I've heard from not just on the, on the issues with Magicycle, I've heard it from almost every single brand. <laughs> Where, you know, like even for Rad, for instance, Rad has no, been known for really good customer service. Um, it was one of the reasons why I bought a Rad Power Bike as my first bike, because I had heard about their exceptional customer service. And yet, I'll go on these various forums and I'll read, um, yeah, let's take the shortcut. This is the shortcut. You know, since I've had the magic cycle, I've taken the long route to go over the hills and everything, but we'll take the shortcut. Um, I've read from other people that they've had issues with, uh, with RAD and saying how terrible their customer service is. But then you read other people, they say how great the customer service is. So I think every single one of these uh, groups or forums that you join, there's always someone who's not gonna like what happened and there's gonna be another guy who loves it. I guess every situation's different, right? Every, everybody has a different situation and then the resolves may not work in the favor of the person, sometimes it does. So, uh, I, I do know this, I know that the companies probably don't like hearing it any much more than you like reporting it. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's easier to try to get the resolve to happen as fast as they can but sometimes they, they can't. They, they're stuck just like you're kind of stuck, but uh, good morning. But, but you being the end user, of course, you want to have that, that resolve as fast as possible so you can get out there riding. This is also another issue too with a lot of these online purchases that we make. You know, and you probably know that most of these bikes are coming from overseas, they, they're not made here in the US. They have to be shipped from China or from wherever else they source their stuff from. I'm gonna go around this thing here. It's, it's a problem for everybody, believe me. They, they don't like it any much more than you like it. But being that we're the end user, we probably get more upset about it. Yeah, this is a... This is a tough one to, to pass through. How you doing? Okay. Yeah, I've said it before. That intersection is an accident waiting to happen. Five or six feet? <laughs> Five feet at least, I would say, as we pass her. Um, what else has been up? Oh, you know, this is the area where I rode off the path. Remember that video? I kind of ended up over there. <laughs> uh, 
I think people were right. If you keep your eyes in the area of where you want to go, not where you're headed, you'll be better. If you look off on one side, you're gonna hit. You're gonna hit that. I think it's true. <laughs> you know, if you want to avoid running into something, look the other places, and then you'll eventually just adjust your body so that you're able to get to that other place, so you don't ride off the path. So how's our deer sighting lately? I think so far we've seen two deer this season. One on this path and one when I actually uh, ran into the guy that recognized Russ is right. Yeah, we were out talking and this deer just comes up and starts munching on things. He's probably, I don't know, 20 feet from us. I don't know how far he is. So he's a, he's a bit of a distance from us, uh, but we could clearly see him. <laughs> uh, I didn't put it in the video because I thought that he looked a little too small because of the camera. The GoPro is not great for close-up stuff like that. It's actually designed with a, with a wide angle. At least that's how I, I set it up for it. And so he would just look like a little dot. <laughs> So I figured, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't worth showing the deer. But yeah, there was a deer sighting deer. I've seen a couple of turtles, baby turtles, on this path. I think these are typically snapping turtles. They were just kind of walking across the path. Uh, I've seen big snapping turtles out here, too, because there's, there's little, uh, little ponds that happen from, I think, all the water and things. So yeah, I've seen a snake uh, at Bussy Woods. I've seen a snake out here. So yeah, somebody asked me, do you uh, slow down and enjoy the ride and enjoy looking around? I go, yeah, I, I do. I just don't go slow. I tend to go faster than uh, typical. Like even on this path now, yeah, this is a 15 mile an hour path, but a lot of times you'll see me over that. Like I said, I think, I think on average, I probably average around 18, something like that. Three miles an hour, you know, are you going to get ticketed for that? Probably not. We get a reprimand from that I do from you guys <laughs> from from the lo local law enforcement maybe they might stop you and say hey you're going three miles over the limit but really <laughs> yeah it's not gonna end up to anything so yeah I'm, you know I, I look around yeah I'm looking around now. I know you can't see that because the camera angle only shows you straight ahead. But yeah, I'm, my head is turning all the time. I'm looking left and right and enjoying the, uh, the ride. Where, where are we at? I'm just looking down. Yeah, we're almost 18 miles an hour. That's, that, I think that's really, that's usually where I'm gonna be. Yeah. So yeah, complain as you want. We'll probably always be three miles an hour over at least. Sometimes it'll jump into 19, sometimes it might jump into 20. I mean, you, it's hard to maintain the speeds, quite frankly. Especially when you have a lot of power. When you have a lot of power, it uh, tends to want to do itself to a little bit faster speed. <laughs> now, if you had a bike that didn't have as much power, yeah, you probably would do 15 miles an hour. Uh, because maybe the bike has a harder time getting up that far, that fast. But uh, this one has a lot of kick to it. So it really does want to go a little bit faster. Let's talk about fast bikes. Now we know that there's brands out there that are designed specifically for being fast. Okay? Now there are brands that are class three bikes that are designed for 28 miles per hour, but there's other bikes that go beyond that. You know, their, their wattage is higher. I mean, the legal wattage is supposed to be 750 watts, but we know there's bikes that are way past that in the thousands of watts, right? So uh, I don't know how they get away with that. 
would I want one of those bikes? I don't, I don't really think so. No, I, I don't think so. I like my speed, but I like reasonable speed. I mean, to me, um, even 28 miles an hour felt pretty fast to me. I think it, as long as I can do at least 24, 25 on a bike, I'm, I'm good with that. You know, like I mentioned before, that uh, somebody mentioned that I'm going too slow for traffic conditions. I need a faster bike. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> I, I don't think I would feel comfortable uh, going that fast, quite frankly. As, as much as I would like to keep up with the traffic and kind of uh, and kind of like get off the, the, the street as fast as I can. Um, still physically riding that quickly i don't think i'm in, i'm that comfortable with it so i i know when i first got this bike uh, not this bike the the red rover when i first got an e-bike i felt doing 15 miles an hour was really fast i thought yeah my norm will be around 12 to 14. well that's changed okay so if my norm now on the street hits 24 25 would that change would i want to do 35 you know, that's, that's kind of risky. I mean, even falling at 28 miles an hour it would, would be major damage to you. Imagine what, imagine what that would be if you were um, doing 35 miles an hour and falling off of a bike. I mean, we don't have protection. Even a motorcyclist, if they're wearing what they're supposed to be wearing and things, might have like leather jackets on, uh, leather pants on, uh, boots on, a helmet that's designed better than like a bicycle helmet, you know, a cheap bicycle helmet. There are better bicycle helmets. Um, so we as a bike riders, what am I wearing? I'm wearing shorts. I have nothing protecting there. I don't have elbow pads on. I don't have, um, okay, I have a little bit better helmet on right now. I have a burn helmet on. And uh, we've got some other helmets coming as well for review. That's a little hint of what's coming. So if you're looking for a better helmet, <laughs> stick, stick tight with Russ What's Right because we're gonna have some helmet reviews coming up. And uh, so that's really all the protection. I, okay, I have gloves. You know, I always, I always wear the gloves. Yeah, there's definitely striping. If you if you look, my fingertips are are tan, but underneath the glove is not. You could definitely see it. And I, and I wear the gloves because if you fall, you tend to put your your hand out, and I don't want my palms all scratched up from the from the asphalt if I fall, and I do that. All right. So since we have this lady in front of us, let me show you something. When I was following the other woman who said I wasn't allowed on the path, we were about the same distance about here to her. I would guesstimate that to be 30 feet away from her. Okay. And some uh, people were saying, you know, you're following too close to her where you could even be assaulting her. Kind of hard to assault somebody 30 feet away. <laughs> I don't why are you following her, they asked. Um, because I was going in that direction and she passed me, that's why I'm following her. <laughs> so the, uh, the coughing is still there, as you, as you can hear. All right, we are probably about 20 feet away from her right now. Just to give you an estimate of distances. But, uh, but I'm not passing until we see how well we're doing. On your left. All right, we had to pass them. I just uh, couldn't take it any longer. <laughs> All right, so the speed is at 22 miles an hour. Okay. Sometimes you gotta go a little faster to make a pass. There's no way you can't.
Yeah, people don't like it when you go too fast. Let me, let me, let me say this, and I said this to one person too. I may be breaking the law, okay, doing my 18, 19 miles an hour on a 15 mile an hour path. But uh, please tell me if you go 55 miles an hour on the highway, on the posted 55 mile an hour post. Do you do that? If you don't do that, then yeah, you're breaking the law too. A lot faster than I do. I've seen people here in the Chicago area, the posted sign is 55, they're doing 70 or more. I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying a lot of people do it. And if you don't go faster than 55, you're actually impeding traffic at that point because everybody will be passing you. There's nobody, I don't think, that stays at 55 miles an hour on the speed limit sign. So for bikes to be at uh, 15 miles an hour on the posted sign here and we go three miles over, four miles over, don't sweat it so much, people. <laughs> So I'm heading back because I got to make sure that the kid is doing okay with the fence. <laughs> yeah, this fence is going to take him a, take him a while. Sorry, I'm still coughing. Sometimes I, I get these little tickly things. Uh, let me say this. I did go see the doctor uh, and on the physical, and he did tell me uh, you got to lose some weight, which is no big deal. We already know that. <laughs> Actually, my doctor... <coughs> Sorry. My doctor never tells me anything. I always tell him. <laughs> it's true. Here's what I told him. He sees me. We talk. And uh, I said, okay. Yeah, okay, here's what we need to do. I know we gotta lose weight. He goes, yep. Gotta drop down that blood pressure. Yep. <laughs> gotta go back on the diet. Yep. I usually tell him what needs to be done. He doesn't need to tell me. I, I know what needs to be done. I just don't do it. <laughs> so he asked me, why did you gain the weight? I said, well, like everybody else, I'd been on diets for the last couple years. I had lost 50 pounds here and there multiple times in front of him. He knows that I can do it. And I said, you know, you deprive yourself of foods that you haven't had in a long time. and. After the knee replacement happened, I lost a bunch of weight. If you look at some of those knee replacement videos, you'll see how much thinner I looked. You can see it in my face. <clears throat> and um, I dropped the weight after the knee replacement, and then I gained it back to the point where I was, where I, where, uh, yeah, let's go this way. We don't, we don't, we don't go this way that often. Um, I lost the weight to the point <clears throat> where I look really thin. And because uh, I told you guys I'm over 250, I won't tell you how much over, but I am over 250. And um, I dropped down to the 130 range. One, uh, I'm sorry, 230, 230, 130. Wow, 230 range. Um, and then I kind of figured, well, you know, I, I could get a little reward for losing that much weight. So then you start eating a little of this. Hey, that tastes pretty good. I haven't had that in a long time. Then you eat a little bit more, and hey, that, you know, I haven't had a pizza in a long time. I've gone to Costco for pizza in a long time. Let's try that. Um, you know, oh, Lou Melnati's pizza? Yeah, gotta have that. You know, next thing you know, you're back to the 250 range. <laughs> so, and higher, all right? So I, um, I said, that's really what happened. And so he said, well, stop it. <laughs> so by doctor's orders, there's not going to be any more food reviews on Sundays. Yeah. Okay, he didn't order it. I ordered myself, but I told him I was going to blame him. <laughs> I gave him Russ's right card. He's going to watch Russ's right. So anyways, um, he plays golf with my, uh, with my surgeon who uh, worked on my knees. And he, they've been friends a long time. So I says, hey, have you seen my doctor? He goes, yeah. I says, I just saw him on Sunday. We played golf. I says, tell him I'm still alive. <laughs> he goes, I will. <laughs> tell him I'm still alive and, and uh, my, uh, my knee replacement channel has turned into an e-bike channel. <laughs> we kind of laughed. 
I said, uh, who would have thought a guy with such problems with his, with his uh, knees that he actually had a knee replacement channel would morph into a e-bike channel? Who would have thought that? <laughs> Yeah, still coughing. Yeah, that is kind of strange, don't you think? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've been a big advocate for e-bikes since I got my e-bike. I've, I've ridden quite a bit. And, um... Can I build an e-bike? I think I actually could at this point, yeah. I think I know enough about the, the workings of an e-bike. I probably could build my own if I wanted to. Um, the only thing I haven't done, I mean, I'm gonna change out a fork. I already mentioned to you that one of the review bikes came in with a damaged fork and I'm gonna have to change that out. The one thing I haven't done though, uh, is actually change out a motor. I don't think that would be that difficult, but it, it would take a little bit of skill, of course. But I think I could do it. I mean, I know about the brakes. I know about some of the other things, the derailers and all that. So I, yeah, I think I probably could build a bike if I had to. That, that's, uh, I think that's something all of us need to learn to do because uh, the one thing that we, we find, at least locally here, I don't know how it is in your area, many bike shops won't repair an e-bike that they didn't sell. Okay. They have their little excuses why, you know. But I think the reality is this. I think, I think that's their way of uh, revolting back to you. If you haven't bought it from our store, why should we help you fix your bike? Because you're not supporting our store by buying online or something. I understand that mentality. I don't 100% agree with it. Because if, if they did help us fix our bikes, they would get the repair services. And there's a lot of people who don't know how to fix their bikes or want to fix their bikes. They'd rather have someone else do it that knows what they're doing. Does that make sense? So if, if these shops would simply say, okay, I know that you, uh, you didn't buy it from us, but I will help you fix it. And here's what the cost is to fix it. And, then, and I agree to that then uh, they're getting that business. Now, they may not get every business from me, then maybe I didn't get the bike sale from me, but maybe I'll buy a part or two here or there, or maybe, uh, you know, out of convenience, I'll buy a, a new bike saddle from them or a bike chain or a lock or something like that. So, uh, yeah, they get some business. They may not get it all, but they get some. But if you turn us down and don't repair our bikes when we need your help, you're probably not gonna get any of our business. You see what I'm saying? Now, um, I used to work in retail. When I first got out of college, my, my dad opened a stereo store. I worked there for eight years. So I understand the mentality of uh, servicing what you sell and trying to uh, you know, keep the customer from, from, um, from the sale through the end of the, uh, the, the servicing end of things. But, um, but we also took in things that we didn't sell and uh, we had repairs done and those customers came back to us. Then they bought their next component maybe from us. You know, that was before all the online stuff was a big deal, right? We are talking late 70s, early 80s. But I understand customer service and I understand, you know, the mentality behind all that. Yeah, it's a little, uh, little area we haven't done that often. Now, these things have hills here. You know, if you don't have a powerful bike to go up a hill, it could be an issue. So, yeah, I think that if the bike shops helped us out, we'd come back. If you don't help us out, we probably will never come back. You lose all sales. So, they got to look at it like that. But many of them don't, unfortunately. Somebody asked me, too, recently about, um, you know, buying a Rad Rover 6 Plus, taking it to work, 
and then going over hills he said he had like three miles worth of hills and I had to I had to say have you ever considered maybe a Magicycle or some other brand not that I didn't want him to buy the Rad and that I wanted him to buy the Magicycle of course I do um, but um, I said that you know the the Rad Rover may not have the same amount of ability to get over those hills and it's true if he had uh, like a Magicycle or a Hemiway or a Aerial Rider or some of these other brands he might find that um, getting over those hills three miles of hills is a lot of miles of hills getting over those hills might be easier with those bikes now the one thing that's uh, attractive is Rad Rovers are now at $16.99. This is the $19.99 bike. They're $16.99 and they're giving three free items. That I think they're giving the USB cable, they're giving a bike helmet, and uh, one more thing. I don't know what else, they're, what else they're giving. Are they giving a front rack? I don't know. They're giving one more thing. So they're really discounting that bike. I mean, it makes me wonder why. They got, rid of, they got rid of my bike, the Red Rover 5, and um, they said, you know, they can't keep these low prices anymore. Well, they're discounting their top bike from $19.99 to the price of what the Red Rover 5 is and giving away items. And now they could use excuse after excuse of why they're giving the sale, but uh, makes you wonder, is it because they're not selling them the way that they had hoped? And it's not, I don't think it's really maybe because of the bike. It could very well be because the price point is kind of high and people want prices in the 1500 general area maybe I don't I don't know let's go over this way so um, so anyways my recommendation to him was uh, consider another bike because uh, hills is not a favorite thing with that bike as much okay now those who own it will of course jump all over me now you can do it I'm not saying you can't I have a Red Rover 5 I can do it I just have more effort to do it versus uh, like this bike I have very little effort going over the hills so yeah don't jump all over me all right we're gonna go this way I'm just hopping along here. <laughs> so we're just gonna wait for traffic to turn, to do their left turns here. Yeah, you gotta look, always look out for left turn and right turners because they'll run right into you if you're not careful. Okay. <laughs> Gotta hit that little uh, crosswalk thing. So yeah, um, between the two, because I, I own them both. <laughs> okay, I, I own the five, I don't own the six. Between the two, I prefer to have one that has a better hill climbing ability. People have asked me too, Russ, what's your favorite bike? You know, that's, that's kind of hard to answer as well. <laughs> um, right now, I would have to say this Magic Cycle Cruiser is my favorite one currently. But you'll find that I ride the Rad Rover 5 a lot too. And, and that's because that's the one that has the, uh, the two batteries on it. But if I had two 20 amp hour batteries on this red uh, on this uh, Magicycle Cruiser, I'd probably be riding this a lot more than I would the other bike. Now when they do send me the battery, um, I don't know whether they're sending me a 20 amp hour version or a 15 amp hour version. If they send me the 15, I'll still be limited of where I can go with it. If they send me the 20, I'll still be limited a little bit of where I can go with it because I have a 15 on this bike right now. So if they give me the 20, I'll have 35 amp hours. On the Rad Rover, I have 40 amp hours because I have two 20 amp hour batteries there. And because of the fact that it doesn't have 
um, what, what we feel is only a 500 watt motor that goes in peaks of 2750 is not going to eat up all the, the power either, so which means I have even more range. So, which is my favorite bike for a long range thing? It would have to be the Rad Rover because I can get more range out of it because it's not eating up all the power. It's not eating up all the power and, um, but at the expense that I can't go up hills as easily, but I can go distance, I know it. I've, I've, I've been proven already. So, so in that sense, uh, the Rad Rover would be my favorite bike for that situation, you see. So every bike has a, a pros and cons. Cons of this bike, this Magicycle cruiser bike, is uh, it does use up a little more wattage to get you the power that you want to do at the expense of your range. Now, there's a new bike coming that's called the Ocelot, right? That's a 20 amp hour, uh, 20 inch wheel bike with more torque. Uh, it's not foldable. Will that become my favorite bike? I don't know. Once I have it, I'll know. <laughs> All right. Um, my feeling's a little mixed on that bike. Um, I'm excited because it's new and it's just something that I'm, I, I don't have uh, anything like it right now. Uh, I, I don't have a 20 inch wheel bike. My wife does, she has the Rad Mini Step Through 2, but I don't ride that bike. I've only ridden it once just to test it to make sure it was safe for her. I couldn't even pedal it because I had her her uh, saddle adjusted to her height, <laughs> which is not my height, quite frankly. Okay, now, on your left. So uh, the guy that just came up over the hill, I can hear him huffing and puffing coming up over this hill. That is so typical if you had to ride this without any type of uh, motor on it, because he had a regular bike. And um, I, don't, I don't huff and puff as I go up over these hills. I don't. I, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times I don't even break a sweat. <laughs> All right, if you're gonna lose weight and stuff, use it for losing weight, you're gonna help, okay? We ride our bikes for different purposes. Uh, some people ride it for exercise. Somebody asked me, do you get any exercise on your bike? And I said, probably not. <laughs> I, I usually tell you guys what I really think. I, I don't, I don't uh, play games with that. I, I said, probably not, because uh, I don't ride it the way people ride it to, to lose weight. I've, I've never ridden my bikes for that purpose. I rode my bikes to keep my knees moving to fix my uh, to fix my um, uh, my knees to keep my knees moving because of my knee replacement if I rode it the way you would ride it to lose weight I would be pumping hard like that other guy coming up the hill then you're gonna lose weight okay I can't really do that with my bad knees that's why I couldn't ride a bike in the first place for many years is because it was too hard on my knees. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so I probably will never do it that way and I probably won't use my bike to lose weight, all right? I, I use it just to, uh, I use it just to, uh, to keep my knees moving, okay? Now, the funny thing is, uh, I, I was talking to my doctor and I told him, I said, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm not losing weight with the e-bike. And he kind of thought, why? And I told him why, you know, just like I just told you. I says, you know, I asked you for a handicap placard. I saw that spider web, I was going right through it, <laughs> face level. Um, I asked you for a handicap placard because I have handicap issues, but I'll ride a bike for 64 miles and have no problems with that. <laughs> and he thought that was kind of strange. And I says, well, I said, think about it this way. My hips hurt more than my knees at this point, probably because of the weight. And, um,
and I'm sitting on a bike. I says, I can't walk through Costco and walk back without having some type of issue with my hip or my knee, my right knee more so than my left at this point. Um, but I can ride a bike for 64 miles and have no issue at all. And that's because I'm sitting. I'm, I'm not, there's no pressure on the knee. There's no pressure on the hip when I'm sitting on that bike. So he says, yeah, that, that would make sense. <laughs> so I says, uh, go figure that, uh, go figure that a guy with a replaced knee, bad hips, one other knee that probably down the road will, might, might need replacement, <laughs> has a knee bike channel. <laughs> Yeah, we thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> but that's the reality of it. You know, some people says you're an ambassador for e-bikes now. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, kind of. E-bikes for senior riders, really. Most of you guys are seniors. It's okay. We're a strong group. So, uh, anyways, that's about it for today. I gotta head back. I gotta make sure the kid is doing well, painting our fence in case he needs anything or if he needs a washroom break or something. I told him if, if he had any issues, uh, just to call me and uh, I will be right back, you know. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. More rides coming in the future. Hopefully we can get out a little further. But now that the kid is back, um, yeah, I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time with him. So our rides may not be too far away. Life gets in the way, you know. So i got to make sure he's okay. I'll talk to you guys next time.